Good day and welcome to another episode of Hackers, Misadventures, and Scale Modeling. As I had said on my Facebook page, I went and bought the eight pound book on the Airfix 124th scale Spitfire. Now, I read through it and I found it a very interest, interesting magazine. It has several, um, the contents basically is building the Spitfire, review of the Spitfire, what's in the box. In the back, towards the back it has uh, references. And a little historical description. Now I read the historical description and it basically, it's, a few pages of of description of how the Spitfire went from went from the Mark One, of course, and reasons why they went to Mark Five, and then the history between how the Mark Five fr Spitfire airframe went from that to the Mark 9 and all the engineering uh, changes they had to make to the, the aircraft so it is a good it is a good read not not saying I have I have read this before so many in many different books but this is a very short short more to the less technical terms and more interesting and more interest of reading it gives you a nice uh a list here of the modifications to the spit spitfire mark 9 which is which is interesting it um let's see here oh it gives you the the model number location of the change and what it was for so this gives you all the um, serial numbers for the airframes starting with the first airframe as you notice it goes from 1041 here to 1063 there and then 1073 there so everything in between those numbers is what where the changes had taken place some nice technical drawings of the cannons and a couple of nice pictures then we get into then you get into the kit itself a little bit of decals here but I was looking for on here the um, instrument panel but must be on a separate decal anyways it gives you the the five color schemes in the box then it goes through with pictures of the sprue what different things are on the sprue in that like this is interesting you get different you get different um, horizontal stabilizers. You get two tails, tail rudders. All the um, different parts. It gives it tells you here that you get extended landing gear and retracted landing gear if you wanted to put it in flight mode. So once I get my kit, I will do a, a full review. But it looks, and you get two different instrument panels, which is interesting. Then we get into the a build by. Um, there should be a guy. Somebody's name here. Well, it's Bitfire 9C stock code 
A17001, which is this. Okay, so I'm looking for the name, but the gentleman here, as soon as I find his name, I'll tell you, built a Spitfire in Azar Blue and Stone Stone and um, Sand Camouflage. He's done a nice job of the interior. This is this is a great reference book if you wanted to see how to build the interior. What he had to do, do when he did to some of the interior, the painting, the building. What would be nice seeing it that's got an I don't know how much of a exposed engine we got in here. Just let me get through to that part. But I like the way they do the Spitfire tubs these days. All nice. How the wings are put together. Nice spar in there to keep the wings in the proper Dorel. Painting. Assembly. Putting in, putting the engine together. They've re really done a nice job on the in engine and the uh, engine bearing bearers. It's propeller, putting the propeller together. The tank underneath. Yeah. That, Uh, it, how he put the engine bearers together. Now this is where this, if off the market guys could come in handy, if they could bring us out a fuel tank to put on that, then that would be the ultimate Spitfire, and also bring out um, radio compartment because they they leave it cut out so you could put one in it if you wish but there is no as far as i know there's no radio to go in there so there's another thing that the aftermarket guys can do now what did he um why did he paint the camouflage let's see He's painting, finishing up the assembly in that. We'll get to the painting in a minute because I had a look at this. All the little clamps he had to put here and there and make everything work, but that's normal for any kit. Okay, so he used Mr. Colors Azar Blue on the bottom. Okay, now what do you use for the top? Oh, he used True Colors RAF Dark Earth with uh, what I believe is stone, if I'm not mistaken. I remember, yeah, mid top colors um, RAF mid stone. I did this particular paint scheme on a on a 132nd uh, Pacific Coast models of this, but I think it was number six that I did, not number one. I'll have to find the pitch, picture. I never got never got finished building that one because I ended up moving and it stuck in storage. Again, something else that's a pain in my um, but but I have to go find it and I can't see if I can finish it because it's all been painted not just some weathering that's it nice detail showing the engine wall this is the people have been raving raving this kit and there's there's reasons why it is an excellent kit 
I can see the aftermarket guys coming up with uh, S X you can build I think pretty sure you could build this one with I'll have to go back and look at the parts but I thought yeah it comes in comes with a separate separate tip and I, I'm not sure in the parts we'll go back a bit here where the wings are I don't know if they give you the um, clip wing parts or not let me check looking 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 be nice if I had the actual kit in hand but and or, and or instruction sheets I'm not seeing where the tips are. There's the tips. I don't think they got, I don't think they got the clip, clip wing. Unless that's the, that's it right there. But it'd be, I know there's a Spitfire Mark 9 with extended wing tips too. That's a reconnaissance version. I think it was the Mark 8. Not sure. Anyways, get back to where we were. But he's done a beautiful paint job. Azor Blue is a color that's difficult. For me, it, I think it, that's too light a blue, but I could be wrong. Uh, I'd have to do a little more research. There is somebody did some research on that. I have to find. I got the research there, anyways. So then we get get a little. Um, little story about uh, a pilot named Malcolm V. Lowe tells his story about going from the Mark V to the Mark IX. That was an interesting story I was reading. It seems the pilots didn't really like the Mark IX at first, but once they realized it was a more capable aircraft than the Mark V, then they were more than happy with it. It depended on the pilots too, but you got different pilots here, different markings for different pilots. I really enjoyed reading reading this book. See, this is the one. This is the one I did. Yeah, it was number six. That's the one I did. I also did a clip, silver clip wing version, which I'm still debating whether it was actually a I did the Revell kit in 32nd scale, and I'm still debating whether it was bare metal or painted silver because the RAF had very little bare metal aircraft, and when they were bare metal, when they did look like they were bare metal, they were actually painted silver. So it's without actual documentation to help me on that. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. So this is a walk around that was in the book. It gives you a lot of interior detail. They also tell you that there's a couple of um, modern instrumentation in here. And that it discusses that um, This is, it says here with this picture, many Spitfires had unpainted pressure paper seats, not buca like, like as often reported, but here it is in painted interior green. The back is to the original specifications. So 
that's not a metal seat. It must be, it must do it the way, it's probably the paper seat, but they're using modern, modern glues in it to make sure it sticks together. All in all, this is a great magazine. Gives you some accessories in the back. Some decals. There was one decal here. Which one is it now? Yeah, this one. This one here. Let me let me see here. Let me, let me bring it up and focus for you. This one here. I would do this kit in this one with the girl on it. That's the Royal Canadian Air Force. Yeah, right there. See the girl? Something something Canadian if I was to build it. What's this one here? Um, There's also a couple of Spitfires that, and according to this one, that were in the RAF, but, oh yeah, here it is. Camouflage ski. This one here, by Work Kit World, is uh, for Lieutenant Donald Morrison, 401 Squadron Royal Air Force. He was a Canadian, so he had maple leaf on the side of his aircraft. There's another one here. That's, can oh, sorry. Sorry, didn't know that, sorry. This is the one I was talking about before. This one is the, another one. That's. 451 Canadian Squadron. So there are some Canadian options here. There's another one here. Uh, squadron Leader Harry McLeod, OC 443 Squadron, REF. So I got lots of choices for air. Canadian aircraft. Problem is, it says it's 99 pounds in English. No, sterling. Problem with that is, with my Canadian dollar, is it sucks. So it's about $200 Canadian. I'm not going to buy one. Anyways, here. That's the review of this magazine. I hope you enjoyed this. And remember, every every um, builds an adventure, so go make it awesome. And we'll talk to you later. And bye. Hi. Just a side note. I know my my schedule is being all out of whack, but it can't be helped. I'm trying to improve it, and hopefully we'll be back on track soon probably not until after April but I'm trying to get as much as I can for you guys and I just hope you understand and um, if you'd like to help out just either send a donation to my PayPal or you can subscribe to my patreon page but anyways I hope you enjoy my videos and I'll see you next time. Bye. And remember, every build is an adventure, so go make it awesome.